<laughs> Brilliant. Oh, hello there, everybody. Adam Cleary, 442, and you've just caught me reading our latest issue featuring cover star Martin Erdegaard, a man who this morning will not be very happy. And he's not very happy because according to a number of people in your WhatsApp groups, Arsenal are bottling the league. That's right, two consecutive two-goal leads thrown away against both Liverpool and West Ham, and only a 90th-minute goal stopped them getting beaten by bottom-of-the-table Southampton. That is not good. But is it really as simple as just some psychological unravelling from the constant pressure of being chased by Manchester City, or is it actually far more complicated than that, and there's some small things happening on the field for them which aren't doing all their good work? Well, the answer to both those questions is yes and no and sort of. So really quickly for you, this is Arsenal as they have been set up this season, this 4-2-3-1. They've been brilliant. And how it works when everything's going well is that this back four shuffles along to become a back three. Zinchenko moves into the middle along with Thomas Party to give them one of these nice trendy box midfields with Shaka and Odegaard. Gabriel Jesus, he drops in from the ninth position, leaving loads of space for Saka to get in on goal and Martinelli to get in on goal and get loads of goals. And then voila, you end up with what every team secretly wants in attack and that's like a 3-2-5 or lots of options. And what's made them so good this season is even when they're doing this, Sinchenko's confident in coming out of the centre to make overlapping runs on that side. Ben White, despite being a centre-back, is happy to get up and support Saka. And they end up with all these players who can make things happen. Now, let's get one thing perfectly straight here. This all still works. Getting two goals away at Anfield is enough to win you a game. Getting two goals away at West Ham is enough to win you a game. Getting three goals at home to Southampton is enough to win you a game. They have no problem scoring goals. What they have had a problem with, though, is the defensive aspect of how this system works. And how it's supposed to work is that when Arsenal lose the ball, thank you, I'll just take that, they push up as high as they possibly can to try and pin the opposition back in their own defensive third. The idea being that they'll either win it back in this area where they're nice and close to the goal so they can make something happen, or the opposition will get frustrated, will be boxed in, and will end up playing it long into the space behind. And it's worked really well for them. No team has won the ball back more in the opposition third than Arsenal have this season, and no team has won the ball back less in their own third than Arsenal have this season. That might sound bad, but what that means is they're not actually having to do any defending in this area. They'll recover the ball quite a lot because when these long balls come in, they're mopping them up, they're intercepting them, they're getting it back that way, but they're not being forced back into this area and defending conventionally. And that's why the Saliba absence becomes so important because what he's incredibly good at is using his pace to read those long balls and to beat opposition attackers into recovering the pass. Now, Rob Holding has many qualities as a defender including his illustrious, entirely unsuspicious Turkish haircut, but one thing he doesn't have is a lot of pace, which means that naturally Arsenal can't quite be as aggressive or as compact when they're doing this because if the defence has to sit off four or five yards, and we've already seen since Holden's come into the side, their average defensive line is about four or five yards further back, then either the rest of the team, they all have to sit back with them, meaning there's more space in here and they can't be as aggressive, or if they decide they are going to push back up still, all of a sudden there's a lot more space in this area than there would have been previously. Now, this is small stuff. This means the opposition will be under a little bit less pressure. They may create a few more chances from this kind of area. It doesn't explain the catastrophic drop-off they've had in their defensive numbers. That is down to basically two things. The first being stupid individual errors, which we're just going to look at in a minute. But the main one is a lack of proper organisation and just solidity when they are defending in this area. Now, Mikel Arteta is the only person who can tell you whether or not that is because Saliba's in the team and he He's the one who leads everybody. He's the one who organizes everybody. He's the one who keeps everything running properly. But basically, when Arsenal are in their own defensive third and they're under pressure, some of the things they're doing are bananas. The best example is the first goal they concede in the Liverpool game. They've got plenty of players back. It is a counter-attack by Liverpool, but it's not exactly a quick one. They're set. They've got men over. They look like they should be fine. But for whatever reason, Rob Holding, he's been forced out into the right-back areas. Inchenko's covered across into the centre way too far, and that's left Gabriel filling in the left-back spot. Erdegaard tracks Jota's run, but then there's a mix-up between him and Holding about who should be going with the run and who should be staying with Jones, and in the end, neither of them do it. The cutback comes in, and now we've somehow got Zinchenko and Party 
as the centre backs, and despite the fact they've got seven men in the box, they still somehow leave Jordan Henderson completely free in the middle. His shot is off target, it breaks towards the back post, and because Gabriel is there, a centre back who's not like his brain doesn't work the way a full back does, he's not constantly expecting runners in behind him on the blind side, he reacts slower than Salah, who's left with a tap in. Likewise, we're at the West Ham game here for their equalising goal. They defend the first ball into the box really well, but then as they move out, they do not do so as a unit. They do so as a completely jumbled mess. You can even see here, Gabriel has realised that they've not moved in a line. He's desperately trying to get White and Holding out as far as he is, but by the time they've even got their heads around that, the balls come back in, and because they're so all over the place, Bowen's got a clear run into the space. And I mean, what can you even say about the second Southampton goal? They have the men around the ball to put some pressure on it, but just somehow don't. The pass is free, Walcott gets in behind, and that is just not the defensive action of a good defensive team. That is just all over the place. But the thing is, right, you can put that lack of leadership and that lack of organization down to Saliba being missing. You are gonna lose players key ones across the course of a Premier League season. It's the manager's job to then get on the training ground, work out what changes need to be made and to adapt. And the thing about Mikel Arteta is he's already proved he can do that. They lost Gabriel Jesus for ages after the World Cup. That looked like it was going to be a big problem, but they adapted. They found a new way of doing things and they continued to score loads of goals. And that is what should really worry Arteta and Arsenal fans because they can get the system together. They can find ways of doing things. They can get a bit tighter with a bit more this and a bit more that. What you can't stop happening is some of the stupid, idiotic decisions the players have been individually making, which they just weren't doing in early parts of the season. Thomas Partey, normally so reliable on the ball, receives it on the edge of his own box and just tries to flick it over Declan Rice instead of playing it into the space, they lose the ball, they concede the penalty. Granted, Liverpool didn't score from theirs, but there's no reason whatsoever for any player, never mind Rob Holding, to make a challenge in this position and concede a foul. And even Aaron Ramsdale, who's been so reliable for Arsenal this season, he tries to play an impossible ball into Zinchenko in the middle here, when he's got at least two players unmarked either side, and that just hands the ball back in that area and Southampton score. Like, bottom line here, as a manager, you can work on the structural stuff, you can work on shape, and you can work on positional play. What you can't really fix is players making catastrophic errors. And lo and behold, right now, top of the table Arsenal currently also lead the league for errors leading to opposition chances. That's just simply cannot happen. You will not win this or any other league if you are the worst team in it for giving away these chances. So thus my highly scientific, give me all the coaching badges in the world professional opinion is that if Arsenal do want to win the league, they need to stop doing that specifically. Now, far more qualified pundits than me may well tell you that this is all down to the pressure of leading the league for this long, for City being absolutely relentless in their pursuit, for Arsenal having a lack of experience in these kind of situations, for not having a lot of quote-unquote winners in the side. I don't know what that is. Nobody will really know what that is. It is just happening and it needs to stop. And unless it does, well, we know exactly what's going to happen then. But that is quite enough for me, in my opinion. So please let me know what you make of all of this in the comments below. Are Arsenal bottling the league or is it just like three draws, man? At the end of the day, it's not that bad, dude. It's not like they lost any of those games. God, people are so dramatic. And of course, while you're here, please do subscribe to the 442 YouTube channel. It is the best footballing YouTube channel in the world, according to my mom. And also, Brad. And a new issue of the 442 magazine, soon to be available in all good news agents, and as I always tell you, the shit ones as well. In the meantime, though, thank you so much for watching. I have, of course, been Adam Cleary. We'll see you soon. Bye.